Hi everybody, this is Leo Vallant with part 8 of this series. Let me read the uh, chapter heading. Part 8, Jesus the Jew versus Christianity. The impact of the failed messianic mission on the Mediterranean world. The destruction of Jerusalem. The great Jewish rampage. Serge Kito's war and the Bar Kokhba revolt. The Jewish diaspora. Christian exploitation of the Jewish catastrophe. Now about the consequences concerning his own legacy on the one hand and the rise of Christianity on the other. Again, Jesus was no prophet or I can hardly imagine what he might have seen in that alternate future where he didn't quit but continued on doing whatever he did as Messiah. How could that possibly have been any worse than what did happen. If you're not familiar with the history, then allow me to go over in brief. His generation would not pass before Jerusalem was sacked and the temple burnt to the ground. Judea was ravaged, sending Jews fleeing all across the Mediterranean world. These traumatized refugees probably many of them already zealots, became radicalized in their hate for both Rome, who had conquered and despoiled them then, and hate for the Greeks, who had conquered and despoiled them under Alexander the Great centuries before. Perhaps they even resented the Greeks for their Christianity that made a hostile caricature of both their religion and Jesus of Nazareth. Well, not that Jesus had a huge following in Jerusalem or amongst the Jews across the Mediterranean world, but I suspect that they would have resented the misrepresentation of any Jew by the Greek community. Okay, what happened? These radicalized Jews would rise up across the width and breadth of the Mediterranean world and slaughter up to a million Greeks and Romans. Search Keto's war and the Bar Kokhba war. Read in the description so you can find the spellings. Some small nations were entirely, entirely depopulated after this Jewish rampage. This would lead to a second and even more punitive attack on Jerusalem, as well as campaigns to exterminate Jews all throughout the Roman Empire. And it wasn't just a Roman army that went after the Jews with a vengeance. There was scarcely a soul in the entire Roman Empire who did not have some friend or relative who had been raped, slaughtered, and mutilated in this Jewish rampage. The memory and the bitterness against the Jews who had perpetrated these atrocities against humanity would last centuries. Or maybe we could even say that this trauma became, in a sense, baked into the European psyche, where we might even expect that in a European person's nightmares, he or she still sees Jews with knives and clubs. It is not the way I wish collective consciousness would work. But in any event, what Jews who did survive and no, they weren't all radicalized murderers, terrorists, zealots, and allied Jewish appeal telemarketers. But they were, were still all well advised to abandon the Mediterranean world. It was, beginning, it was the beginning of the great Jewish diaspora. Jews would have to find new homes amongst people who would eventually hear of what happened in the Roman Empire. This made it impossible for Jews to, to just start over somewhere with a clean slate, and people the world over became weary of the Jews. But overall, it was a time in the Mediterranean world where nobody, is neither Jew nor Gentile, were happy, and where everybody had suffered and received some permanent psychological scars from the widespread trauma. Now, considering all of that, and given horror stories and tragedies by the millions, now let's imagine that Jesus could see into, into the future and knowingly and deliberately choose all of that. 
by saying the words that he certainly did say. Father, take back this cup that thou hast given me. I quit. If Jesus had been prophet, prophetic and knew what was to happen, then we could put that message in a bottle and label it. Think about this, ye who would be king. But if Jesus had not been prophetic and hesitated and quit out of an abundance of caution, well, there's a lesson in that too. It's bring on change, up the revolution. It can't be possibly turn out any worse than the doom we're already facing. Hmm. Now let's think about all that, but in relationship to the sinister rise of Christianity. Remember that the first sacking of Jerusalem was in 70 AD, which was just a bit more than three decades after the crucifixion. The, G the D Jesus community was growing and thriving, and the memories of Jesus were still vivid and mostly oral. Why write down what everybody knows, right? But then came the sacking of Jerusalem and the ravaging of Judea. And all at once, every member of the Jesus community was slaughtered in the massacre. You know, of course, that this was the fulfillment of the prophecy in the book of Revelations. The final battle the end of the world, the day of judgment, and the followers of Jesus being taken up into heaven. So that is, it seems to be that's what exactly happened to the community of Jesus in Judea, where it actually was their final battle. It was the end of their world. It was their day of judgment, and yes, it was when they were all taken up into heaven. With the destruction of Jerusalem and the raising of Judea, all the true knowledge of Jesus, except for the sermon and a few fragments from notebooks, were destroyed as utterly as the temple walls themselves. After, the, after that, the Greeks were free to make up anything they liked, and so that's what they did. The Greeks made Jesus a poster boy for free sin. Let's move on to the next.